Hey my friend, welcome to a new Cordal lesson and this week this is gonna be an absolute treat for myself because I get to explore the clean chords of the album Damnation by Opeth. So you know I'm a sucker for sad, melancholic, dark and chords with lots of frictions and the album Damnation by Opeth is a gold mine of those kinds of chords. So I'm gonna cover all songs on the album and show you all of my favorite chord voicings but I'm gonna skip the last two songs of the album because on the song ending credits this is just some basic uh, chord strums like E minor and A sus2. So there's nothing special and the last song, Weakness, doesn't have much guitar. So let's start uh, with the song Window Pane, which has a capo on the second fret that I'm gonna place right now. And the first chord uh, of the song is like this. So basically, in a lot of chords that I'm going to show you, there's going to have a lot of frictions and especially a lot of, out of minor second intervals inside of the chords. So a minor second interval, you can just pick any note and you have to play one fret uh, below it or above it and play both notes at the same time. So that would be like this. All of those frictions are really, really frequent in the chords of Opeth, inside the chords. So this is exactly the, the principle with this first chord here. So basically this is the shape of an E minor with an added ninth in the chord. And the friction is right here between the third and fourth strings. So basically the note on the fourth string is the ninth of the chord. And the note on the third string, the open string, is the minor third of the chord. So when you play them at the same time, it creates the nicest friction for chords. So they often do that. They add that friction and with the ninth and the minor third in it. And then uh, in the song, there is this riff right here. So this is exactly the same principle. The first chord is like this, but if we uh, if we play it without a capo, let's say, this is gonna be this shape here on the second fret. And we just shift that shape until the C sharp from the fifth string. So this is what I call a ninth power chord because it's actually just a power chord, but with an added ninth on top. So instead of being just this, this is this, and then because of the the, the capo and the, um, the key of the song, we can use the open strings. So this is a good idea. So chords with ninth are perfect for it. And if you want my full lesson on ninth power chords, I have a full video on it. Uh, I'm gonna skip to the fifth song in the album, which is Hope Leaves, because it also has a capo on the second fret. So it goes, it goes like this. So this is basically the shape of an A minor seven chord, A minor nine chord, uh, with a seventh in it, and it's played with both fingers on the seventh fret on the fourth and third strings, and with leaving the rest open. So the same applies here. You have that little friction because the open second string is the ninth, and the fretted note on the third string is the minor third. And then that's kind of a big stretch if you want to reach the third fret on the sixth string. But I, I really believe that this is how they play it. And that might be a reason why there's a capo on the second fret, because if you were to play that without a capo, that would be even uh, in an even bigger stretch, right? So this is a really cool chord. And then later in the song, they also play this voicing. 
which even has more friction because you still have that minor second friction. But you also have the G sharp at the bottom, which is uh, uh, which makes a tritone with the, the note on the third string. So you have this and this at the same time. So this is really spicy. So if we say that the key of the song is B minor, because we have a capo on the second uh, fret, uh, else it would be an A minor key, but now it's a B minor key. A minor and then uh, uh, B minor, sorry. And then A and then G are all regular chords in the key of B minor, but uh, adding the G sharp, is something that is borrowed from a different key, so that's why it's very spicy. Then I'm gonna remove the capo and go to the second song on the album, which is In My Time of Need. And oh, do I like the chords from this song. Ah, this is so beautiful. So the four, first chord here is basically an E minor with an added ninth and an added eleventh. That is played like this. This is pretty easy to play and what I love about this chord is that it pretty much has the whole beginning of an E minor scale all in the chord. So if you look at the notes in the chord, you have E, you have F sharp, you have G, and you have A. So if I play a, 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 an E minor scale, it goes E, F sharp, G, A, B. So you have E, F sharp, G, A. All in order, all in the same chord. That's amazing. And then for this, the second chord, it's like of an A minor chord. Once again with open strings. And then you can add the minor seventh in the chord by adding your pinky on the eighth fret of the second string. I absolutely love this one. Uh, the next song is Death Whispered a Lullaby. So it goes like this. So same principle here, you have an F sharp power chord, but you add the open third strings, the third th string to uh, create the friction. And then you play a very big G chord, so it's pretty much a G major, but by barring on the second fret, it creates such a chord with a low center of gravity, it's like... It sounds so low and deep. And it's also very somber because now the key is F sharp minor as dictated by the first chord. But when you play the G like this, it's like a Phrygian scale, right? With the flat second. <laughs> so it's, it has a Phrygian feel. So this is really, really cool too. And then on the song Closure, that has to be one of your favorite riffs of the album. Uh, the one that goes like this. Oh, sorry, I almost forgot that I was filming a lesson. I had so much fun with it. But I mean, there are some chords in this riff that are so audacious. I mean, if you look at one of the chords here. Wow, so this is basically a chord hybrid between minor and major because this chord has the major third in it and the minor third in it in the same chord. 
So it creates such a big friction, it's just uneasy, right? To hear, this is really audacious, but it works in that riff. And the last chord too. And it's even lower, so it's a bigger friction. This is the same thing, you have the B flat here. Then you have the minor second, uh, minor third interval, sorry. And then you have the minor major third interval. So you have the minor third interval and a major third interval. So it's as tense as it can get, right? I mean, if I wanted this to be more tense, I have to add even, even more tension like this, like something like... <laughs> this is pretty much the, mo the most tense chord that I could ever create. And I'm sure that it would sound good in an opeth song. But all of that is to say that sometimes you can really stretch the limit of tension in your chords. If it's used in the right way in a kind of a riff like this. So I absolutely love this one. The last song I want to cover is To Rid the Disease. Uh, this is the one that starts like this. But for me, the best chords in this song are in the chorus. So it's basically like this. Um. So it starts with what we call spread triads and it's a chord that I cover a lot on my channel because it's so useful. So you play an E minor spread triad with the open strings, then you go to a D major spread triad and it then it goes to a sort of hybrid spread triad. So it's like the E minor but with a C sharp at the bottom. And then the last one is a sort of C major with an added sharp 11. Really beautiful, this one. So those four chords. And if you have a hard time fretting the, the third chord, you could play it like this alternatively. It's much more comfortable to play it like this with the, the ring finger on the ninth fret of the sixth string, but when you play the whole riff, it makes more sense to go down the fretboard like this. So it's just a good stretching exercise, right? You take this chord and you stretch both ways like this. So that might be a cool exercise for you. So if you want more help with those spread triad chords that I've just showed you, I have a free mini course on my website, Ambient Guitar Academy, where I spend more time with more shapes of spread triads and you could use them in that sort of context for like melancholic, dark chords with uh, lots of frictions if you add open strings to it. So you can click on the first link in the description box and enroll in my free course. This is my gift to you for watching my video until the end. So I hope that you enjoyed this little rundown of some of my favorite chords from Opeth on the album Damnation. And if you have other chords that you really, really like that I haven't mentioned, you can um, tell me in the comment section below. So don't forget to uh, take my free mini course to learn more chords like these and until next time, au revoir.